Hey look everybody, it's Diecast Dorbs. He's been bringing you the quality content for less than two weeks. It's Diecast Norbs, I'll be the Norbs, and welcome to my channel once again. I really appreciate all the support that you've actually been giving my channel and everything, and it's been great so far. I'm actually having a pretty nice ride on this. Um, today, I decided to do something a little special to me, because Back in 2000, like the early 2000s, maybe 2003 or so, we actually had a car that was overtaking the rally championships for, it seemed like it would actually go on forever. And I don't think I'm actually talking about anything else than the Ferrier X Impreza. A beautiful machine, the, one of the best cars that I've actually known, and I've always wanted this specific car in real life. Today, I'm going to be doing my review on Transformers Alternator Smokescreen. But wait, is that the only one I'm going to be reviewing? No, because I'll also be reviewing BT Smokescreen. It's not fresh out of the package. I opened them up a long, long time ago, but just to show you the differences between Hasbro's plastic version, which is amazing, I think that this is actually just a great version of them, or Takara's die cast metal version of Smokescreen. So, I'm gonna take you on a ride, and I hope you enjoy it. Go. Hasbro Alternator Smokescreen. A lot can actually be said about this car. Now, I really used to love like watching this car on the rally races and everything as well as I was actually going through following this car and all its might and glory. It is probably one of the coolest cars that I can actually see uh, that I can actually think of. This was around the time I think when America actually started going to like sedans and that sort of thing and like you know instead of like the more aerodynamic things like say like the WR of like say the um Nissan 240ZX and that sort of thing. I think that's when things actually started going more sedan like. Can a car or a sedan be as cool as say like a two door? Well they answered it with the WRX. Just complete amazing sexiness it's probably one of the coolest things ever and um here we go now this is actually going to be between this and this now takara tomi actually used a lot of die cast metal in this one and um i haven't taken them out in a while so i know the box is actually kind of like disheveled and i know i'm going to kill a lot of collectors by doing this Oh, damn. There we go. And open says me for the box. There we go. And there we are. Look at this beauty. So awesome. Oh, wait, before I go. Here goes the product placement for the box. Beautiful. It tells you everything that you're actually looking for. I'll actually leave it on here just in case you actually do read Japanese. Tell me what it actually says over here. I'm dying to know. One day I'll learn this language. One day I'll learn. And just a couple of twist ties to get through. And then we will be all set. While I'm actually untying some of these twist ties, I'm actually going to do like a slight comparison between this and the robot mode of Optimus Prime. Very cool figure still, in my opinion. I'm going to also compare him to Siege Starscream, just so you can actually see relatively what their robot modes and the car mode of... Uh, of this smoke screen actually is. I think we're actually we're actually looking into a 124 scale on this uh, smoke screen. So very very cool scale. And oh uh, here we go. Well I'm actually getting excited behind here. Take him out of the box because like I said, haven't played with him in forever. But while I'm doing that, I'm gonna distract you guys with. 
the guy that started my channel here. There he goes, next to Siege Jetfire. Still an amazing bot. There we go. And last but not least, there he goes, next to the gleaming beauty that is Smokescreen Takara class. Just beautiful. Now, I'm going to give you a quick close-up of Smokescreen here as the Takara. You notice that gleam? That beautiful gleam there? That's a, that's beautiful paint job. Let me show Look at this. Not even faded once since I actually took him out so many years ago. Beautiful. Now, I'm not saying anything is wrong with Hasbro's version because I really enjoyed the mess out of him. Like, he was great and still is. Like, I think he still stands up. I, user error, I left him in the sun sometimes and like, I think this is why I'm actually getting this coloration over here and over here. So, bad collector, and like some discoloration over here, which I don't really mind because I think that it's actually kind of cool that you actually have this faded out look on him and everything like that. But like, look at that, uh, that, this poor thing. Look how I actually, ah, uh, that's horrible. So, this is why I'm actually kind of glad I actually kept this in package. But, um, yeah, look at this. This is actually great. My lucky number seven. Beautiful. And... Last but not least, can't forget my buddy, NECA Godzilla. Transforming vinyl tech smokescreen is actually a couple of well, peg holes right underneath. So you do that, you extend the leg, that actually releases everything over here because they were actually connected by a peg that actually goes into a slot right over here. So, we want to then come over to this panel over here and move it up, and that releases the seat. Bring that down. Over here, we're doing that on this side also. We move that up, and then bring it down. Now, you can actually hear how fresh this car actually is, uh, how fresh this actually is. It's just like our real reasons why I wanted to do a comparison video between the Hasbro Alternators version and the Takara Tomy smokescreen, die, uh, the Vinyl Tech diecast version. And there are real differences here and everything, it's because I, I love the way this looks. Like, you can't get better than die-cast metal, in which case, this is one of the reasons why Vinyl Tech was actually made in the first place. It was because not many toys were actually being made with die-cast metal at that time, at that moment in time. And I think they actually kind of, like, really wanted to bring back the love of die-cast metal transforming robots, uh, just like they actually had back in the G1 days and that sort of thing. But there are differences. Like... Besides this, this looks great. I love it. But I think the tolerances on this are actually like a little bit better. Because on this one, when I actually first got them, and maybe it's because I didn't get a chance to tighten the joints or anything like that yet, but I'll actually notice a looseness in the, in, of the heels here or like a looseness in like the actual leg. You know, there are like a couple of places here and there where it actually does become like a little bit looser and everything. And for this, let's see, there it goes right there. Like I actually saw like uh, the heel on this one actually start giving way and everything like that. Which is, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, the color and everything like that. Everything about this is actually so much better and so much more superb than say this. But I still love the fact that this one can actually still hold a pose. It can actually, it still uh, doesn't give way under its own weight and everything. So like he's actually great in this form, in this format. Except for the fact that I noticed that if you actually do leave them out for a while and everything like that, there are certain things that can actually happen. I guess that's like really just normal wear and tear of like any figure. But um, yeah, that's it is what it is. Now, as far as 
anything else. They actually do share the same kind of art of articulation. You actually have a 360 on the head. You actually have a ball joint right over there. So you actually have a hinge joint right over here. You can actually move the arm outward if you actually move this piece. Let's see, you actually have a hinge over here and over here by the forearm. So you can actually get like a real deep bend you actually have a ball joint by the uh, by the wrist over here so, and you also have an opening and closing fist you have waist rotation you actually have a leg rotate uh, leg lift right over here he doesn't go all the, he doesn't go out like you can actually make a decent a stance but that's pretty much it you can actually bend him at the you can actually bend his leg he actually does have ankle. He actually has toe. As far as like as far as articulation, he's actually pretty cool. It would have been nice if they actually like made like maybe a uh, rotational joint over here, so then he can actually have like um, so he can actually have like that uh, GI Joe kung fu grip and that sort of thing. But like. You know, back in the days, I didn't really think that they actually thought of that or anything like that as like an added kind of bonus to a toy. Like say, with, with Masterpiece Smokescreen here, I'm just going to leave them over here. Like over here, you actually definitely have a rotational joint over here and everything where he can actually enjoy a lot of other poses and everything. But, you know, at the same time, that's what toy technology was back then and everything. And, um... Like, as far as articulation, I would tend to think that this guy actually kind of, like, blows both of them out of the water and everything like that. It's a later toy. Like, it's actually something that was, like, maybe just released a couple of years ago. But, you know, still yet, though. Now, I'm going to put these guys over here. And I'm just going to... Uh, see, that's the tolerance issue. But... There we go. Now, I'm going to just put him next to, we already compared him to Masterpiece Smokescreen. We're going to compare it to everybody's favorite enemy, Starscream. Next to Optimus Prime from the Siege Voyager class. And, My favorite, Jetfire. Here we go. Like, probably like about to his waist, almost, you know? But, you know, they're actually pretty sizable. And, last but not least, we're actually going to use Mecha Godzilla. There we go. I really, really love them both. Like, they were both amazing figures for that time and everything like that. Like, way back when, before we actually started getting Masterpiece Transformers. And I really, really love these guys so much. Like, I have, like, a, a like few more alternators from way back in the day. A few more B a BT from way back in the day. They're both great. So, like, whichever one you actually get, whatever your druthers is. If you are a car person who actually loves having model cars... This is actually, these are actually great figures. And um, one thing about these is that I actually left these out for a long time. And like, uh, there were a lot of people who actually just thought that they were just model cars. And found out later on that they were actually these guys. And they were just like blown away by them. So, you know, there you go. And like, if you actually want to get them and everything like that, I'm not exactly sure what channels you would actually go through or anything like that. But... You know, if you do ever find them, probably on eBay or, like, Amazon or anything like that, if you tr decided to, like, do yourself a Treat Yourself Friday, treat yourself to these. They're both great figures. Well, that's it for now, and I hope that you'll actually tune in next time. I don't know what I'm going to review next. I think I'm going to have something special. In any case, take care.